when I was a kid growing up in Brooklyn, there was a cop living in my building. You talk about corruption. This guy used to, every Sunday, he would take his family to the movies, never paid for a ticket, go into the Chinese restaurant, never pay for a meal. You know, I don't know if uh, the peop- any of our listeners have uh, the uh, TNT network, okay? Uh, on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock, there's a program called Public Morals with Edward Burns. He was one of the producers and directors and creators of the show. Talks about policing back in the 60s. And it's about a public moral squad. And, I mean, it's, it's not really a joke. This is what used to go on. They would shake down the perpetrators. You know, in the opening scene, a guy's arrested as a John. He's from out of town. He tells Edward Burns, who's the responding officer, listen, I got $300. He said, I can't afford to have this reported back to Minnesota, which is where he was from. So Edward Burns takes his money, gives him 100 back, took 200 and gave his partner 100 bucks. So they each had a, everybody split in the action. And that was commonplace back in the 60s, before the Knapp Commission in New York, because this takes place in New York, in Hell's Kitchen, okay? The cops that, that lived in, the, that, that were serving, either had cousins or uncles who were cops, or they were gangsters. There was no in-between. You grew up in Hell's Kitchen, you were either a gangster or a cop. And you were on the tape. Okay, but then again, that was all before the Knapp Commission. Yeah, well, them were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never end. Well, you know, I mean, uh, it used to be accepted. It was common. Now, this is unfortunate law. Unfortunately, why people, some people today still believe that the police are corrupt. Okay, now... And I'm sure there are corrupt cops. There's and no... look, I'm not saying no, but the bottom line is you really have to, you you really have to stretch things. And I mean, you're really taking your career and your life in your hands, you know, because there are so many restrictions and there are so many people watching what goes on out there. Okay, uh, who would want to throw away a career and a pension? For a couple of bucks, it's just not well, worth it. Well, who knows if it's a couple of bucks? Listen, they're, they're, listen. There's always a bad egg in every, in every job, in every community. I mean, there's no in, in every religion. There's some bad eggs. So, and then okay. if you watch, not only public morals, but if you watch uh, Murder in the First, which used to be on on Monday, which took place in San Francisco, you know. There was a whole, there were a whole group of corrupt cops, okay, that were being controlled within the department themselves. So, I mean, you know, maybe this is why people, you know, have a, you know, have the outlook that they have when it comes to the police. Well, there was an interesting article that I printed it up before. And I'm sure that out of that article there'll be a few cop haters. You want to talk about that? Yeah, a little go bit? ahead. You want me to talk about it a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Okay. Well, this, you don't have to read it. Just give them the gist of it. This you came know? out of a CBS somewhere in uh, in Atlanta. Atlanta. A man shot by a police officer who went to the wrong Atlanta house, ran bleeding outside. Where? Where a neighbor heard him asking, why did they come in my house? Why did they shoot me? Why did they shoot my dog? It happened Monday night when officers arrived at the wrong Atlanta address after a report of suspicious activity, shot the man who lives there, killed his dog, and likely shot fellow officer, leaving him seriously wounded, authorities said Tuesday. Does that make any sense? Well, and then at the end of the article, they quoted uh, something that happened in 2006, nine years ago, 
where the police burst into the home of a 92-year-old woman, and she eventually died. I'm not sure if there was gunfire or whatever, but she died. No, I think and, and, and how many times do, you know, when uh, Homeland Security gets a report and they go to the wrong address and they break down the, the wrong door, you know, and scare a family half to death. And then they realize they made a mistake. All in the name of uh, national security. Yeah, I'll tell you, this is... This article is pretty, pretty bad. You know, like when they shot the dog when they first came in, it was the doors open? They just came right in. I guess the dog started barking. They shot him. Then they shot the man in the leg, and one of the cops shot another cop. Really bad story. This is the kind of stuff where is, is it bad training, a bad 911 call? I don't know what it is. Yeah, they logged in and out at the same time. I'm not sure what this stuff is. And then, of course, we have Friday night. That's our usual religion show. So uh, that seems to be opening up for grabs. Now, uh, I got a question for you. Uh, uh, yesterday I heard that the president has enough Democratic votes committed votes to uh, carry his veto. But today I heard another Democrat pulled out. I didn't hear. Though. I don't know. As of yesterday, I knew he had enough votes. Yeah, I think today they were saying somebody else pulled out. And well, you know, the vote isn't until the 16th, around the middle of the month or toward the end of the month, so... Actually, the end of the month, so he still has time, you know, uh, anybody who's sitting on the fence, you know. Well, I don't agree with the, this uh, whole deal, so I hope... Uh, well, you see, that's where we differ, because I believe that it's, for the time being, the best possible deal you can get, you know, every day, you know, you hear the Republicans and other people say, and some Democrats say, well, you know, no deal is better than the deal that we have. Well, the bottom line is, at least, you know, there are certain restrictions that you're placing upon the Iranians. And, you know, like I said before, 60% of the Iranian population is 35 years of age and younger. Eventually, these people are going to become the, the government. The mullahs are going to be on their way out, okay? And these young people very much want to be westernized. They very much want to be part of the rest of the world, okay? And to slap them in the face right now, all right, first of all, you know, the United States is one of the biggest proponents of this program. If we pull out, how's it going to look? Because you know that China and Russia, and France, and Germany, and Great Britain, all right, they're not going to back us in this, okay, we're going to be standing all alone, and it's going to be very embarrassing, forget about the president, it's going to be very embarrassing for this country, okay, well, and the bottom line is, you know, I don't worry so much about it, Israel could take care of themselves, Israel doesn't need our help, they don't want our help. Okay, other than, you know, the uh, military aid that we give them, we give a lot of countries military aid, okay? Uh, you know, Israel was smart enough to erect that Iron Dome, okay, which protects them against any attack. The United States provided the Iron Dome to them. I said that. Yeah, no, the Jews, you said that they were smart enough. What did you say? Let no, I said the United States gives Israel military support and money. I mean, anybody listening knows that part of that was the Iron Dome, okay? But the bottom line is, you know, uh, of course I worry about Israel because they're all alone there. You know, they're surrounded by enemies for the most part. But the bottom line is, 
you know, voting down this, you know, I, I don't even know what to call it. It's not a treaty. It's an Suppo agreement. Voting down this agreement would not bode well for the United States. I really don't think so. Well, how can you have an agreement, treaty, or anything else with a country that's holding our four Americans hostages? Well, you see, that... that, that and that's, you're going to tell me that that's a different situation. No, I didn't say that. Yeah. I didn't say that. Don't put words in my mouth. You know, uh, they call them detainees. Well, you know, I would say, well, call it like it is. They are hostages. You know, uh, for the most part, they are people of Iranian descent, and that's how they get around being called hostages, and that's why they're being called detainees for whatever reason. Okay? Uh, the one thing I really think, you know, now according to Secretary Kerry, you know, uh, they were discussed during the course of, the, you know, the fate of these detainees slash hostages. You know, uh, they were discussed when, uh, before the, the uh, agreement was signed, sealed and delivered, so to speak. And, uh, you know... What they could have, they, they could have tried harder to uh, secure their release. I'll agree to that, you know. Um, and there are some other things that came out, you know, with, uh, you know, Iran uh, policing their own, uh, uh, you know, um, nuclear facilities, okay. Uh, I can understand apprehension when it comes to that as well. But the bottom line is, you know, you have to start someplace. You have to begin to trust somewhere. Okay? How can you trust a country that says they want to they want to kill us, blow up Israel, they have demonstrations that go against us, and you tell me about all those young guys. Those young guys never even don't even know. I have news for you. The Iranians can say whatever they want. If they make a move on Israel, Israel will not hesitate to use an atomic bomb. That's what, that's what do we need? Another? We need a world war? A world war? Come on. One atomic bomb is going to cause more and more atomic bombs. You're not bombs. listening to yourself. You're not listening to yourself. You just finished saying that you don't trust Iran. Yeah. Okay? But if Iran makes a move against Israel, whether we have this pact or not, you think Israel is going to think twice before they use nuclear power? They may, they may consult the United States, okay? But the bottom line is, if it means that Israel is going to be wiped off the face of the earth, Israel will use atomic power. They will use an atomic bomb. And that'll probably, want, that'll probably be the end of the world. Well, all right. So what's the difference whether Iran uses it or Israel uses it? The end result is going to no, be the, the same. No, the end result is Iran right now, because of what's the, what we gave them, has got more money. If we give them, we're going to have more money to promote terrorism. They're going to be able to promote, to, to uh, enrich so much uranium that by the time this agreement is over, they're going to have enough to make bombs. <laughs> According... Why do they, let me, uh, let's, let's go back a step. Why do the Iranians even need uranium? Well, they say they would like to use the nuclear power for, uh, you know, positive purposes. They didn't say anything about uh, mil military use. Positive purpose to them is to blow up Israel in the United States. You should know that by now. And number two, they've got... They don't have a missile that can reach the United they're States. They're getting it now. They, you should listen to, to what's going on. I do listen to what's going on, Felix. Yeah, when, yeah I do. Yeah, they're talking about getting uh, some long-range... Or they, are, they already have they're them. A, they're a far cry from long-range missiles. And the bottom line is... Yeah. You know, your Republican friends in, in, in Congress, before anything happens, the missiles will be flying over there. So, I mean, from this country. 